we get a couple lights, maybe uh, scout the uh, the saddle just for us real quick, just to make sure they don't have anyone trying to get us on a flank. I mean, I know it's domination, sure. but just want to double check. Checking. Sure, Wanna be dead straight. Saddle's clear. Not yeah. even approaching. Kintara, you're gonna be the first one in the circle. The one with uh, Destin, I'll just hold up on the corner. If you wanna go underneath, under the platform. 25%! Do not let the enemy keep it up! Online. Any contacts in the tunnel? One. What is it? I just got a glimpse. Okay. Got Charlie off in the distance, there's a light. I think he's looks like he might be a sniper. Yeah, he might be going towards the uh, island there, but it does look like a commando. Yeah, yeah it is. Target spotted. Uh, no, don't chase. It doesn't look like he's uh, he's only got mediums in an SRM2, so. Okay, he might be spotted up the middle. Alright, let's hold up here. Assaults. I don't mind leading the charge, but we need everyone else to come with us in the tunnel. Don't peek, don't peek, don't peek. Okay, they're peeked out all over the uh, Delta line. Alright, assaults, if you guys want to come with me, can lead the charge to the tunnel. I think that's where they're at. Roger. Ready, ready? Three, two, one. Turn around, Side turn around. Lighten up all around the entrance and exit to the tunnel. Just keep your eyes on the back of the tunnel because they're gonna, they, now that they know we're here, they're gonna swing around like you said. New target. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're already pushing. They're up on top of the platform now. Stick right. with our annihilator. Let's not let him fall behind. He's got a lot of firepower. I don't want to lose him. So who's got you? Foxtrot, center torso. Take him out. All right, let's push back around. We, they, we got them split right in the middle. Right outside. They got Foxtrot. He's only got half his weapons left. Get that other torso. He'll go down. Annihilator, we need you to push forward. You need your, we need your armor up on the front. Go for golf, go for golf. Take out golf, guys, in the tunnel. The rest, the rest of us go for Kappa. He's behind me. Pop UAV, there's some clearance. Broken on the command. Go for Charlie, Charlie. Charlie and Delta. Delta's up top. He's just trying to peek. We also have an assault in the water, so just watch your flank. Go for Delta. Take him out. Delta. Man, that Marauder's tank. Left, guys. Oh, the Cicada's the second one left. 
Focus on acquired. the cicada. Alright, now the last one's commando. Sweep the legs if you can. Target spotted. All these heavies. Center torso. Nice kill. Oh, we still have two left. What the heck? Where'd they come from? Here we go. Yeah, I don't know how we went from four to zero that quick. Yeah, right? I was like, I thought someone else sweeped them up, but... CT on that Shadow Cat. Looks like he's running, so we're just gonna get him on the timer. Unless our lights can catch him somehow. Yeah, he's just running. He's not even trying to fight. Oh my god, I survived. That was a stick. Nice work, fellas. Hope the comms help. Oh, it did. Much. Thank you for calling. Any games you play where you can get comms, bad, or you should win. <laughs> Tried to make it clear I know I was rambling and, and firing them off real quick, but thanks for sticking with me, fellas. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the Mech Lab, where we're going to go through the details for the build on the mech I have in front of me, the Mad Cat Mark II Deathstrike Hero. Now you already saw the first round of gameplay, which was a drop call, but now it's time to dive into the details, the nitty gritty aspects about this mech that I didn't explain, obviously, through that first round. So we're going to go through everything. We're going to go through the overview, we're going to go through the custom loadout, the placement of everything, then we're going to go through rest, the rest of the stats, and then we're going to go through the skill tree. So you see exactly what makes this mech tick including all the quirks and aspects about it that I applied to it that made it uh, you know definitely very high octane out there on the battlefield and then we're gonna go through some other rounds of gameplay including the final round of gameplay the third round of gameplay that's right I'm doing three rounds of gameplay for you guys today all on different maps so you can see how this works in different environments but the last round I believe is probably my best ever round in Mech Warrior Online. Um, at least that I, that I know of, that I recorded. I, I I can't remember, but it's a fantastic round, and I hope that you guys uh, stay tuned to the end. Unbelievable. I have no idea how, how it came to be that way, but let's dive into the mech for now. Let's go through the stats and the overview of this build. So first and foremost, checking out exactly what this Death Strike has to offer. Two ballistic, six energy, zero missile, one AMS, and zero ECM. Now, if we dive right into the loadout here, as you can see from that first round of gameplay and the placement of everything, we have dual UAC 10s, one in each arm, and then the six heavy small lasers. So obviously the, the uh, UAC 10s are more for support, mid to long range kind of firing, suppression fire, even so. Um, we only have five tons of ammo to work with, so you're gonna try and close in on your opponents a lot quicker than you normally would maybe, uh, you know, get a little bit more aggressive with this mech. It is a 90 tonner, so you do have to be careful. It's not necessarily the tankiest of all assault mechs, but, you know, it does have some capability to tank for some damage for a short amount of time. You don't want to have a tremendous amount of face time with this mech, obviously, up on the front lines, but it definitely can hold its own up there in case you do get caught in some sticky situations. But as I mentioned, the UAC 10s more for support, long-range kind of trading until you get closer when you can start utilizing these heavy smalls. Um, very, very heat-intensive, even... You know, we are only using small lasers, and that is very, very close-range combat that we're going for there. A Clan XL390 is what I wanted to go with on this mech. Fills it out entirely, so, so we're really um, packing the tonnage in here, inclusive of the slots, the structure slots, and everything like that. We have the, So as I mentioned, we have that Clan XL390 
We have um, 78 out of 78 slots, 556 out of 558 armor. I only took uh, two armor hard points out of the head so that we can fit that last clan double heat sink. And then um, with that being said, we have a heat management ratio of 1.44. So the heat management and the heat dissipation is extremely uh, good on this mech, actually, um, with 21 total double heat sinks, 10 in the engine, 11 inclusive of the five on top of the engine, four in the right torso, and two in the left torso. Um, the last two uh, tons of uh, tonnage that we had, I allocated towards a targeting computer Mark II. So we do speed up our projectile speed, our targeting time, etc., etc. You can go through this entire list if you care to do so. But essentially, we filled out every single thing on this mech to the brim. It didn't even want to put jump jets or anything like that. Um, they're two tons each, and they take up one slot a piece. And, you know, the trade-off for me, especially with assaults and jump jets, just really isn't there. Um, I'd prefer to just keep it the way it is. Focus more on firepower and heat efficiency, targeting a bigger engine for some speed, and that's exactly what we did. So we have a 59-point alpha and a 75.5 uh, speed rating with that XL390 in here. Again, zero jump distance, but that's the the uh, overview of the weapon loadout, the everything that we is placed on this mech and how it's configured. So you can see exactly where the heat efficiency comes from, exactly where the placement is of those weapons, and see the uh, uh, the silhouette a little bit in the background where uh, the barrels stick out of the arms and then you have uh, the four small heavy small lasers right underneath the cockpit and the last two that are pretty much in line with the cockpit on the arms so that's how it's configured but heading over to the skill tree now just a quick little overview here Pretty much the right side of this uh, of this mech is what we focused on. So obviously the uh, UAC rack uh, enhanced enhancement, um, you know the the jam duration is 15% uh, less um, with with both of these nodes enabled. The laser duration, three of the four possible nodes there, so obviously our fire or our burn duration isn't as long, and they will recharge quicker. Um, velocity bonuses. I wanted to hit this other node for velocity bonus just because it was only three nodes to get an extra 2% velocity out of those UAC 10s. And then, um, obviously, as you can see, the rest of this is more geared towards range, heat generation, and cooldown. Focusing on the survival tree. So we went down the middle um, pretty much catering more towards the armor hardening than anything. And then we did pick up some skeletal density and so forth there. Mobi mobility um, filled out everything. I felt that uh, speed tweak was definitely worth it on this mech with an XL390 in there to allow it to go uh, 75 and a half kph. Um, we did take away some torso yaw, some torso pitch, and some anchor and torso speed. But for the most part, uh, the, uh, the majority of the mobility tree is filled out. Heading towards the operations, we have a tremendous amount of uh, external double heat sinks on this mech. So heat containment and cool run were, will be uh, greatly enhanced with uh, you know selecting these particular nodes there to help with the heat efficiency, help with the heat of uh, the uh, cool down, and, and so on and so forth. Heading to the last node here, that auxiliary node for the last consumable slot. And as you guys can imagine, I went with a cool shot 18 and an advanced airstrike. So that's the overview on this mech. It's an absolute killer if you know how to use it and it's not necessarily a uh, a tanky mech to be up on the front lines for long periods of time but it definitely knows how to put the damage down and um you know i'm averaging usually between 850 to 900 per game um with this particular mech in this particular loadout you know all things considered on average so obviously there are crappy games there are fantastic games and hopefully if you guys stick to the end you'll see that unbelievable round that I did have probably my best as I ever as I mentioned before that I've ever had in this game so thank you guys so much for tuning in I hope you enjoyed the overview on this mech but now it's time to hit the battlefield for a few more rounds of gameplay in the Mad Cat Mark II Deathstrike Hero here we go Alrighty guys, here we go. Second round of gameplay is going to take place on Caustic Valley and we are playing Incursion Game Mode and as you can see we're a little into the match at this point focusing up in the Delta 4, Delta 5 quadrants around the Caldera. Now we don't want them to get a flank on us and take advantage of an empty base so we're just keeping our eyes peeled, playing a little bit more defensively than offensively at this point, just picking and choosing our targets accordingly. So focusing up, looking over the corner, here we have a, uh, a Stormcrow that retreated back towards the rest of his team. We have three mechs in Echo 5, right on the corner of Echo 5, Delta 5. So we're just going to keep our eyes on them, not really push too far forward, maybe look over just a 
quick second here, and this Blackjack isn't even looking at us, and we're gonna get a big salvo into his left side, and he looks to be almost cored up already, so that's a huge shot that we took on him. Going for this Hellbringer, though, right in front of us, he's gonna get some shots down on us, but we're gonna get some return fire as well. Yes, that Blackjack does have a cord center torso, so I'm gonna let it sit for just a second here. Maybe he will make a mistake. Looks like he's focusing up on one of our friendlies. Focusing up now on this guy right in front of us, this Mauler, and we're going for that center tour, so it's very, very weak. Taking him out of the round, my friend is able to take him down. I did lose a heavy small laser in my right torso though for that. I am getting pinged up by some missiles as well. So just trying to dodge out of the way of any more incoming damage. Now focusing up around Delta 6, Echo 6. These guys are gonna, gonna try and push around the corner and we're gonna take advantage of that as best we possibly can. They do have a death strike off in the distance, but he looks to have overheated himself and killed himself. So that's a 3-1 advantage that we have right now focusing up everyone on this warhammer and he goes down we get a shot into that center torso for the kill now focusing up around the corner going for this marauder 2c scorch and as you can see i'm getting a little bit more aggressive on this side because my left torso is not as weak as my right torso so i know that i can afford at least a little bit more tank ability before i have to back up focusing up on that scorch again we took off both of his side torsos which affords us the kill changing targets again really quickly as evan jag has his back to us that Hellbringer off in the distance is still pinging us up pretty good. I do have a weak center torso, not completely core just yet, but we do have to be careful. Pushing up now though with the rest of the team, we're focusing up on this Hellbringer who goes behind some of the natural terrain to hide, but you know what I'm gonna do? As long as he's behind that corner right there, I'm gonna go for the Evan Jack. No, he backed up! So I'm going for both of his torsos now, going for that center torso and my friend is able to get him down. Now I get to focus up on this Evan Jack who looks like he's just trying to hide behind the wall and I'm gonna go right for that center torso. A couple of UAC 10 shots to the center torso and he goes down. Turning around now, going for the Jaegermech Hotel. Both his left torso and center torso are very, very weak. We're gonna pop over the hill here and hopefully get some shots down on him if unless one of our friendlies gets him down. And yes, he does get taken out. Now in front of us, we do have a Stormcrow and to our left, we have an Atlas who looks like he's trying to push out of the Caldera, but I'm gonna focus up on the Stormcrow first, see if we can get him down. And yes, we get him at the tail end of that salvo with the UAC 10 shots. Now focusing up on that Atlas, we're very, very hot right now, so we need to be careful. It is 10 to three at this point. So we're going for the center torso on that Atlas. My friend is able to take him out. Last opponent remains though is an Uziel 3P who seems to be very very fresh so we're probably gonna be able to get some shots into him we're gonna chase him down yeah it looks like he's just staying in the base at this point trying to get some side torso shots now because it looks like he's trying to run away but use the defenses to his advantage which is actually a smart move I'm curious to know though where was he all game I guess he was maybe AFK at the beginning I I'm not entirely sure but now we're gonna go for some shots right through the gateway there He's oscillating back and forth, trying to get some cheeky little shots down on the rest of my team. But we're gonna push right through the gateway and chase this guy down. He is very much in range. We did get some big shots down on that right torso and he's got his back turned to us. We could probably get him down and there he goes. So we go right through one of his torsos. He had an XL engine and that takes him out of the match. So the game is ours, 12 to three is your final. Inside of the opponent's base here, five kills, five assists. Four times doing the most damage, 851 damage total with nine components destroyed. We did top the leaderboards here with damage and our score for the round. An absolutely ridiculous round of gameplay with this mech, especially on one of the hottest maps in the game of Caustic Valley. But that's going to do it for the second round to wrap it up. Let's head back out to the battlefield for the last epic round of gameplay. Here we go. Alrighty guys, here we go. Third and final round of gameplay is going to take place on HPG Manifold. And right here from the beginning, we can see some of our opponents poking out from one of the entryways on the side near Delta 3. Now we are putting some damage down on these guys from long range. A little bit of trading going on, but they put an airstrike down right in front of me. I'm going to hide in the corner and hopefully dodge it. And somehow we got out of the way entirely from that strike. But now we're going to focus up again and pick these guys off if we can. They have a lot of lerms flying over at one of my friendlies, this other Mad Cat Mark II. And I'm just going to hang here for a second, 
Looking down on the minimap, it's Let's not even a minute and a half back. into the round okay. until just now. So no real need to get too aggressive just yet. There is, again, some more long-range trading going on in this. Locust had no idea that we were right around the corner. Got some damage down on him and his buddy, the Jaeger Mech Echo, who's off in the distance. We do have some incoming missiles coming by, but it looks like all of them got shot down by one of my friendlies. Focusing up on these two heavies over here, Dragon and that Jaeger Mech is still back there. Yeah, the Echo, that Jaeger mech, he just keeps putting down some long-range DACA into us. Quad LB2s and AMS. So it's not a huge alpha by any means, but a lot of sustainable damage that he'll be able to put down. Looking across the map, we do have a heavy and a couple assaults there. One, two, three in our line of sight that we can target, but we're going to go for the Jaeger mech instead. Get this guy down to seal off the flank. Going for Echo on that center torso if we can. He's focusing up on me entirely, and we got the kill. Taking off that left torso, we must have had an exit lynch, and so he goes down. But now we're going to focus up on our next target, the Supernova right across the way. Going for that right torso, which looks to be cored out and open. If we can take that off, that would be a lot of firepower that we can take off this guy. So we're going to keep our sights on him as long as the team is going for him. And we got the right torso, so there goes a lot of his loadout there. Going for that other torso, he has a standard engine as well. So... He's going to hop down, but he's completely neutered at this point, so he should only take a couple more salvos before he goes down entirely. And we got the kill on him as well. It is 2-2 two to two right now. Focusing up on Hotel, we need to be careful of the heat management there. Firing off those UAC-10s and those heavy small lasers in conjunction with each other is just too much heat for this mech to handle over time. So we're going to go for Hotel. He's trying to run away, going for that backside, coring up all of his torsos on that backside. Now focusing around the corner, another supernova right here in front of us, and we're just going to go for him now. That death strike was backing up more towards the rest of his team, but he left the supernova here by himself, so we're going to go for him. That center torso, right torso, everything is pretty beat up at this point, and my friend is able to take him down. Focusing up now again on Hotel. He's focusing up on us on top of the manifold, so we're going to return some fire on him again. That death strike very aggressive. He doesn't want me alive, but I'm going to go for him as well. So it's three to four right now, and we're focusing up on him. We're going to help out the rest of our team, who is pushing up on top of the manifold right now, and we're going to get our sights down on him and his friendly here, who's trying to back up, and the javelin. So there's three of them up here that we know of. Going for the death strike. He has no idea that we're right next, so we're going to go for that center torso, and we get the kill. So he goes down. Now going for his friend, that huntsman right next to him. He is going to back up very, very quickly, but we're going to focus up on this locust who stands still right in front of us center torso shot and he goes down as well six to five so we did capture the advantage looking at golf that dire wolf across the way he might look to be the next target so we're going to focus up and help whoever else is up here yes we do have a friendly up here and we're going to shoot right through the pillars here on the manifold coring out that center torso he's going to back up and somehow he did survive for now but we are going to be in hot pursuit on him so we're going to keep our eyes peeled and just look for any targets in the meantime and run for of us alpha is peering up it is a dragon now we need to be careful of the dragons they are very tanky but we're going to put some shots down on this huntsman as we drop to go for the kill on this dire wolf going for that center torso on the dire wolf and one more shot to that center torso he should go down and there he goes but we did lose Two of our heavy small lasers and both of our UACs right now. We are out of ammo, so all we have are the four heavy small lasers to go, and we're going to drop down and help out on this dragon. So we're going to put some salvos into him with whatever we have left, just trying to amplify some damage. It is seven to seven right now. Now, as my friendly does go for that dragon, we're going to help out on the Marauder, maybe peel off one of his torsos so we cut off some of his hard points. But now at this point, with the limited capacity of our loadout left, we do need to help out the team from a tanking perspective. So we need to stay up here on the front lines, distract these guys, amplify the damage on whatever components they're going for. I'm going for the center torso on this Marauder. Both the front side and the back side are out of commission on this guy. I did lose another heavy small laser, but maybe one or two more shots on this guy's center torso. And we get the kill off that burn duration. So the Marauder goes down. It is 10 to 7 now. We we're able to wrap up three more kills. There are only two of them remaining. One of them in front of us, which is this Enforcer Gilly, so the hero variant. We're going to put some damage into him as our friendlies start to swarm around him. And it looks like the other of our two opponents left is coming around the corner. It's an Atlas. Are you kidding me? This guy is fresh as anything. I am so 
done right now, just trying to help out and distract a little bit while my team can maybe get this guy down. Magic Pain Glove in that Atlas, he's the one who is taking me down there. Six kills, four assists, 1552 damage, are you kidding? The, I think that might be my best round ever recorded, ever. Oh my gosh, guys, it's 10 to 9. Come on, you have to close this one out. That would be an epic fail with that kind of score to lose now. But now this uh, Atlas is neutered, and that's what I'm telling them. Don't go for him. Oh, okay, so they took him down. But now they have to focus up on this Gilly. The Gilly is very, very tanky. And this guy keeps overheating with his mediums, his ER mediums. Stop doing that. You're going to just overheat again. Are you kidding? It's 11 to 9. Oh my... All you have to do is go for the leg. He's weak. He's, he, all the, that's the weakest component he has. Just everyone go for the leg. Please just go for the leg and end the round. 11 to 9. Go oh my gosh. This guy just keeps overheating. He's going to blow himself up. We have to change targets. And we got him. Oh, but the, the final. We just changed over to the final guy. Gray Magi gets the kill. He is able to finally sweep that leg off the ghillie. Let's check out the final score here for the round. Six kills, six assists, five times doing the most damage. 1552 damage with 16 components destroyed. That I don't even know what to say. That I there are there are no words. I don't. And I suck at this. There are literally no words for that. I I can't even. I didn't. I didn't. I'm lost. Um, GG, I guess? <laughs> well, now that I have my mic back on, um, I'm still kind of in shock from that last round of gameplay. Um, as you all know, I, I usually suck in assault mechs, and somehow, some way, we put up a monstrous score on HPG Manifold. That is my favorite map, and, um... The stars must have aligned on that one for me to get that kind of score, <laughs> knowing how I like to perform with my mechs and the, the weight class that I'm most comfortable with. But that has to be an all-time record high for me, especially damage-wise. Um, absolutely insane. I, I, I There's no nothing else I can really say. I just want to say thank you guys. Really, thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the, all these rounds of gameplay. Again, this is the Mad Cat Mark II Death Strike Hero absolutely insane especially the last round i had so much fun playing with this mech it runs pretty much like a heavy i mean it's very fast especially with a big engine in there it has a very substantial amount of firepower as long as you keep everything intact so helping out your team on the front lines in the early stages cleaning up later on even those backup heavy smalls late in the game i mean they're, they're putting down damage they got me an extra kill there on the last round of gameplay on a very very tanky mech and I mean, the stats kind of speak for themselves. Obviously, it's kind of situational. You have to play it out. And we are in the pug queue. There are very, very random variables that are in each round. But uh, that's the potential that this mech has out there on the battlefield. So do not underestimate it, especially if you come across it on the battlefield. I had an absolute blast playing it. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, check out the links in the description. I'll have a link to my Twitch page if you guys want to follow me. So whenever I go live, you guys can tune in for that. I'll also have a link to my Patreon and PayPal pages if you guys care to support the channel from a financial perspective. I really do appreciate all the support that you guys have given at this point. Whether it's a comment, an email, anything that you guys have to provide to the channel, it's about building this sense of community. And I really, really do appreciate all of you guys contributing in whatever way you choose to do so. So thank you guys so much for everything. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of MechWarrior Online, and I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Take care, guys.